Hi, today I want to talk about how to compose serial music. Uh, this is also known as 12 tone music as well. And normally, in uh, traditional music, uh, Western music, we have, you know, we have like a C scale right now. <clears throat> so that's the scale that we have. Basically, in 12 tone music, it's going to play all the notes that are uh, all 12 notes. So we have <clears throat> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. And also it has a sharp in there, uh, C sharp, B sharp, F sharp, and G sharp in there as well. So we have all 12 of these. And the system of 12 tone music, basically you have to play each note one time all the way through before you come back and repeat that note. So I'm um, we'll talk about how to make the matrix part of this part. And I'll be honest, this style of music is kind of gone now, so I want to kind of make this video to kind of keep this alive and have some interest in making some serial music and whatnot. So first off, you make your tone roll. And um, I'm just going to write it on, 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 a, on, a, on, a, on the board. A lot of times I used to write it off on the staff paper, but in this case, it really doesn't matter. So there isn't really one pitch that, that you're going to say is your home pitch, but you start with one. So let's just start with, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, F. Yeah. So that, that's my first one. And then I'll, I'll do something a little bit different. Maybe E to the G sharp. And uh, D. Uh, maybe we'll C there. Uh, go to A. D sharp. Go to B. F sharp there. A sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I said that three more to go. Um, get the shirt for it. Achieve it. All right, so there it is. Not a perfect tone roll, but it, it, it will work. So basically now we, we kind of give it numbers. And we figure out how many half steps are there between uh, these, these notes here. So, so we count F as being our home pitch here. How many way is G sharp away from F? And we can use a, a piano if we want to, a keyboard. So I got right here F. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's 3 away from B, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, 6. C, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A, A, 0, 1, 2, 2. And another way of doing this is taking, here's F. So I know F sharp is going to be 1 away from that, right? And that's going to be my point So 0, 1. Sorry, I got this right. Zero, one, two, three, four. I mean, I need something to talk So I just kind of go up here. So that's a one. So a G is going to be a two. A G sharp is going to be a three. An A is going to be a four. An A sharp is going to be, I guess what, a five. Then a B is going to be a six. A C is going to be a seven. A uh, A is going to be C sharp. A nine is going to be a B. A B is a ten. A uh, eleven. And there we go. There's our tone row. So our tone row now is uh, 0, 3, 6, 7, 4, 10, 11, 1, 5, 2, 8, 9. So that's our tone row right now. And so this is our, this is our system that we do. Now what I can do is go through here and make my matrix of this because you can make a serial piece with just this alone here. You have basically the basic row here. You have the retrograde of this as well. So I, I can go backwards. So these numbers here correspond to what intervals there are. So at this point here, uh, basically I can just use the magic 12 rule to kind of uh, subtract it to, to figure out what's going on. So do I have, uh, and the zeros are going to be all the way down here. So I've got 3 to 9. That's going to equal 12, right? Six to six, five, eight, 
two, one's 11, 11, five is gonna be seven, uh, two is going to be 10, eight's gonna be four, and uh, nine is going to be three. So now I have another, I have this side of the, of the matrix here. And the way I used to just do this is, is I would take this here and I would just bump up. So here's one, so I know the next one, if that's one, it's going to be one more each time. So that's going to be four, a five, and so forth like that. So I kind of go through here and fill up the matrix that way. And so this probably take, take a little bit of time to write all this out, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and write this out. Uh, another way of doing it is kind of keep going through here and subtracting numbers at times. Now I've got the, 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 the prime at the retrograde uh, going on. I've got an inverted going on and an inverted retrograde as well. Uh, and to be honest with this here, you can do a lot of music with this part of the matrix by itself. And now I just basically go through here and fill in uh, numbers. And it's probably a little easier on grid paper. But that's the basic idea of being able to write out a tone row. And with this here, I then I translate it into, back into pitches right here. Because I got a nine. Well, a nine is going to be a D. And a six is going to be a D. So that's how you go through here and actually write all that out. Fortunately, today, they have matrix makers. Even now, uh, you can go online and type in your row, and it prints it all out for you. Back in the olden days, like when I used to do this, I had to do this by hand. And then you go through there with composition-wise, and one thing that's really neat about this, it kind of gets you away from having to worry about your notes. You're kind of worried more about rhythm at this point. And in music, rhythm is what is the catchy part. And a lot of this here is what they call pre-compositional thought. So if you went through and, and, and listened to this tone row, if I were to uh, play uh, part of this tone row for you. You kind of hear, all right, so here's, here's F, G sharp, B, C, A, E sharp, B, F sharp, A sharp, G, sharp D. So it's actually not, it's not too bad of a tone row. It actually sounds, and I, I could probably actually do something with this tone row here. And now, if I want to do a composition, let's say, and again, I can jump around any active I want. So if I want to, I can actually do something like this. So you can have a lot of fun with it. Of course, you can do retrograde. I can go backwards. I can play B, C sharp, G, A sharp, F sharp, and so forth. Like that. Let's go backwards as well. It really is fun in a lot of ways because it is pre-compositional thought. Before you write a piece of music, before you write anything, do anything that's creative, you think, what is this for? And you think, all right, this is going to be for this situation here, or this is going to be for this situation. I want to do something that's about love. I want to do something about war. I want to do something about uh, happy feelings or sad feelings or rainbows or whatever you, whatever you want to write about. And you think about what you're going to do before you actually go sit down there and uh, uh, write it out. And from here, I could uh, make a string quartet. I could do a symphony. I could do a band piece. I could do a solo flute piece, or a piano piece with this. And it really does free you up. A lot of 12 tone music and serial music kind of have a negative connotation to it. A lot of folks, well, it's just a bunch of music that doesn't sound good. No, that's not really it. it. It really is more than just that. It's actually. No different than if you look at Beethoven's uh, autograph scores, and he'd write out something and he'd scratch it out. And Beethoven used to go through and do whole uh, movements of this rhythm and went back later and put melodies uh, and harmony uh, with those as well. And so he was really thinking about conscious about what the rhythm is uh, to make this music. And uh, I hopefully this serial music won't completely all die out. I, I still compose it and still enjoy it. And I'll do some more videos on uh, serial music. So. For those out there, I hope this helps a little bit. Um, I guess I could fill out this matrix a little later on. But uh, anyways, hope this helps out. Rock and roll.